Well, we're jumping into this wonderful psalm, Psalm 96. And I, I've looked at it under the title, What is the Mission of the Church? It really is a wonderful psalm that just reminds us about what we are meant to be doing as the people who belong to our great God. It's focused on God, on His uh, might, on His power, on His glorious deeds, on His salvation, on His strength, all the things that are true of Him and how we should respond as His people to those things. Before we go through it together, I encourage you to take some time, read through it a number of times. Try and spot some repetition. There's a whole lot of repetition in this psalm. And pray that God would help you to understand his word to you better, so that you'll be able to teach it more faithfully. And as always, I'm going to highlight things that have stood out for me. As with most passages, it's useful just to look at repetition in the different passages. And there's some repetition just helping us to see uh, the focus of the psalm. The focus of the psalm is, is very much on the Lord. And the psalmist who speaks about many different aspects of the Lord that help us to know how to respond to him. And particularly here, how to make him known and why to make him known. It's going to highlight all the repetitions of where we see the Lord in this passage. Just a quick note, when we see the Lord like this in your Bible, it might be in small caps, but... In the Old Testament, this is speaking about um, the Lord as Yahweh, his covenant name, the name that he gave for himself back in Exodus when uh, Moses met him at the burning bush. And he says, I am. Tell them that I am has sent you. This is um, the Lord God Almighty. And this psalm is calling for a response towards this Lord. We see over and over, we've got sing, 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 proclaim, declare, ascribe, ascribe, ascribe. That ascribe just may, basically means to, to give. Give the Lord the glory and strength that is due his name. Worship him. Say. Again, we'll see uh, creation singing. So there's a whole lot of things that are being given to God, singing praise to him, declaring proclaiming his greatness. And a couple of other things we see, uh, sing praise to the Lord, all the earth. So although this is a, a psalm written to God's people, the, the covenant people of God, the Israelites in this case, Old Testament, this singing to the Lord, the call is for all the earth to be doing that and for God's people to be declaring God's glory among the nations among the people ascribe the lord to the lord o families of nations verse 9 tremble before him all the earth say among the nations the lord reigns and he will judge the world the world in righteousness the people in his truth he will judge the peoples with equity. So it's a psalm singing, ascribing, proclaiming, declaring different things about our Lord. And very specifically, all the earth should be doing this and it should be done among the nations to the people. Everyone needs to know the truths that are being articulated in this psalm. And then to highlight some of those truths that need to be articulated, proclaim his salvation, declare his glory, declare his marvelous deeds, for great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared. Why? Because the Lord made the heavens. He is splendid and majestic. He has all the strength and all the glory. He is the Lord of glory and strength. So we are to ascribe that to him. Ascribe the glory due his name. You see, the Lord is splendid. 
in his holiness. So there are a number of things that the psalmist wants us to be making known. There's so much to be singing about and proclaiming and declaring his salvation, his glory, his marvelous deeds, his worth. And as I said, we've seen this, the Lord um, is the covenant name that he was given. And here we see saying, ascribe to the Lord Yahweh, the glory due his name. And it's very clear that this is something that all of God's people were meant to be doing. All of God's people were meant to be singing praise to his name. They were meant to be declaring his glory among the nations because the nations need to hear about it. And in this verse, we, we see this wonderful contrast. For great is the Lord. That's just worth highlighting. The Why should we sing, proclaim, declare for? This is the reason for great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. Why should we do these things? Because God is great. And because he is great, because he is to be feared, he's the one who we need to declare. We need the world to know about him. There's this wonderful contrast though in verses 4 and 5. So he says, he is to be feared above all gods. So that's very different from the Lord. This is the gods of the nations are idols. And this uh, is the, the Hebrew word Elil, or in this case, plural, Elilim. And literally this means uh, good for nothing. The ESV actually translates this as worthless idols, because that's the, the sense of the word for the gods of the nations are good for nothing um, nothingness meaning they don't actually exist outside of the minds of those who create these gods so the gods of the nations are nothing but the lord made the heavens he made everything so the massive contrast there is between the gods, they are nothing. The Lord made everything. And so he is the one we should sing to. He's the one we need to proclaim and declare. He's the one who we should ascribe glory and strength because it's due to his, it's due his name. He is the Lord God alone. There is no one like our God. And so this God is the one who needs to be made known. Here, verse 10, say among the nations, the Lord reigns. This is in the, the perfect tense. God reigns. He has always reigned. He's reigning right now. He will always reign in the future. And this needs to be made known among the nations. This is something that is established. It can't be moved. But now, in the last few verses of this psalm, we see an interesting thing. It says, He will judge it's a new aspect that's brought into the psalm he will judge the people with equity we see here he comes to judge the earth he will judge this great and mighty lord who is splendid in holiness this lord who is reigning this lord who is most worthy of our praise he is coming and he's coming to judge the earth. In verse 11 and 12, we, 12 and 13, um, we see the heavens, the seas, the fields, the trees, everyone, all creation is in jubilant celebration because the Lord comes. He's coming to fix the mess that sin has made in this world. And to do that, he needs to judge the earth. He will judge the world, that is the people of this world, in his truth. Now, that is really bad news, actually, for the people of this world, because God's standard is perfection. When Jesus came, he said, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly father is perfect. And we can't match up. So as those who are going to be judged, we are in a terrible situation. But it's very important to see that 
What we are to be proclaiming is his salvation. Not only is he the God who is coming to judge, he is the God who has come. For us as New Testament believers reading this psalm, we know this salvation and we can proclaim it because this Lord of all the earth, this Lord who is most worthy of praise, this Lord who made the heavens and the earth came down to the earth he had made in the man Jesus. And he came to bring salvation. And this is the salvation that we need to proclaim day after day. This is the salvation that the world needs to know. So what is the mission of the church? It is to sing, proclaim, declare the glory of our God and his great salvation. And we need to do this because he will judge the peoples with equity. He comes to judge the earth. He comes and he will judge the people in his truth. And the nations, the peoples, need to know this. They need to be prepared before that day when he comes again to judge. He has come already once to bring salvation. And when he comes again, he will be coming to, to judge those, to judge all people. And the only way to meet this Lord of all creation on that day and be able to stand we need to be those who have been saved by him, by the blood of the Lamb. And we want to be getting the people around us ready for this day when he comes to judge. And so the news of this, of our salvation, and even more than just of our salvation, the news about our God, our God who saves, our God who is worthy of praise, our God who is glorious, we should be excited and along with all the heavens who are rejoicing and the seas that are resounding and the fields that are jubilant, we should be re rejoicing and resounding and jubilantly letting the world know that he is coming. And it is possible for people to meet him and be able to actually stand only because of the salvation that comes through Jesus. So we really should be thinking about how we can make this news known. It, it really is the best news in all the world. We have a salvation to proclaim and we should be proclaiming it day after day among the nations. The nations include those people who we rub shoulders with day by day. So as you dig into this and think about how you're going to teach it to others, I pray that the truth about our God, his goodness and his glory and his grace and his strength, that these things would result in you wanting to sing and proclaim and declare because there is no one like our God. Well, God bless as you dig into this further.